Everybody is interested in becoming rich. And yes, because why you know richness is with them. <laughs> and they wanted somebody to polish them. But the world tells them to polish themselves. When they polish, they can see it's brightening. They are frightened to polish because they the moment they polish the diamond lights up the whole world and the whole world starts rushing up to them. <laughs> and they are frightened whether when the people rush us rush to them, how do they share their beautiful gospel of truth? Andrew Carnegie, born on 25th November 1835 in the United Kingdom, died on 11th August 1919 in the United States of America, said no man becomes rich unless he enriches others. Was a Scottish American industrialist and philanthropist. Carnegie led the expansion of the American steel industry in the late 19th century and became one of the richest people in history. He became a leading philanthropist in the English speaking world during the last 18 years of his life. He gave away around 350 million, roughly 9.6 billion in 2021. Almost 90% of his fortune to charities, foundations and universities. His 1889 article proclaiming the gospel of wealth call on the rich to use the wealth to improve society, express support for progressive taxation and estate tax and stimulate a wave of philanthropy. Andrew Carnegie said, no man becomes rich unless he enriches others. And every joint family, they knew the amount of love and affection. <laughs> My grandmother used to tell me she had around 16 children and out of that 11 survived and her whole family stays in the same house with around 100 workers almost every day working. She was telling, who knows <laughs> your grandfather, even I don't know when he's coming, when he's going. But that is a lot of fun. Almost all the children hardly knows their father and mother. Whoever is walking in, the uncle or auntie, they know the uncle or auntie comes with something in their hand to chew or bite and is full of happiness calling uncle, auntie, everybody, so many varieties. Varieties was the richness, varieties was the strength. Nobody could escape in doing a bad thing because there is nothing called bad. Everything was done together is strength and that strength was the richness. The moment the first atomic bomb was dropped onto a joint family and the first family left for a nucleus family. The family crashed. <laughs> Happiness crashed, but what they got is materialistic wealth. They could feel they were a bit uh, free to do what they like, but they didn't have the guts to do it in the joint family. Doing that same guts, guts in the same family. And I've seen them after Years past, their children refused to come to their house. They are living in pathetic homes. Then they started going to the clubs. Children are in America. They were begging the grandmother, the uh, mother. They took the mother to America, forcefully made a sign, and then sold the property. Neither she's here or there. At last, she ended up in the old age home. <laughs> no man becomes rich unless he enriches others. Enriching others doesn't mean you share your wealth. Whatever you earn, you, you give to them. No, no, in fact, you get more. You don't have to give anything. Just walk into the house of happiness. And you automatically will smile because children will be hanging around you. You get a free massage, varieties of languages, varieties of new, new ideas. You see varieties of your cousin sisters, your sister-in-laws, all smiling, varieties of dresses. You do not have to go to a fashion parade to show see a fashion show, yes. Neither you have to open them and hide and seek to see a blue film. In the joint family, there is nothing like a blue film. Children undresses and takes bath to give bath. I was a witness in my Rockham school for the blind. 
So 11 standard girls came to Rakam school asking whether they can do seva. That time I called my children. What was the day? It was on a on a Sunday. So I said, okay, Sunday. We all go to the first floor where the children are having the bath. Scrub them and come along with my senior students. And they looked at me. I said, yes. When you are coming for uh, do some seva, you must do that. They went up. And they came back, they're giggling and giggling. I said, "Why?" And they were telling, "Oh, small children with their dress, and we are uh, giving them bath and scrubbing them. They couldn't even in a nucleus family. You can't even see a naked child. And when you cannot see a naked child, you are scared even to see a naked nature tree or an animal. You even cover them up also. When you cover them up, your talents are covered." Your power is covered. Your your creativeness is covered, and you go around and tell people I, they are suppressing me. You go around and tell, you go around and find everything which is fault. When your creativeness is opened, where there is fault, you don't find any fault because when you see something wrong, you will clean it up. When people come to Rakum School, they tell this is dirty, that is dirty. I said, if this is dirty, that is dirty. What's wrong with your hand? Go to clean it up. Don't come and tell me problems. You also participate because this is a problem in the society. Together we can wipe out these tears and bring down Hank, Andrew, Carnegie. Said no man becomes rich. To become rich, you have to be in the midst of the people. That was what went wrong with our swamis, with our saints. They said, "Go to the Himalayas and do your meditation. You will have peace. In that peace, you don't create pieces. In that peace, you find shanti. And in that shanti, you will have the Purnamada. Everything what you do, you give a finishing touch. Otherwise, you never, never will sleep. That was what was said about Jana. And people rushed up in lakhs and lakhs of brahmacharis are still." languishing in the himalayas no 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 please try to understand the mim the you are you can you can meditate you can become the rich in the midst of the market rich people understood materialistic people understood in the in the center of the market they make money but our yogis rushed up to the himalayas himalayas means you should go to the market place and meditate means go to market place and do karma yoga non stop working Till you faint and fall down seven times a day. Every time when you fall down, you find a new opening because your internal and external has been clean, and only truth and God is in front of you. My Japanese friend told me, "You go to any any part in the world to do your business. You don't need a two hundred years history records to find out whether we should invest money there. Just sit on the road and just watch if the vehicles are moving non-stop. That means they have money to burn the petrol. We can invest. We'll get the money back. Go to a city and just watch." Go around and have a look if they have more hospitals. Invest because people are weak. Simple tactics. They are found out in the midst of the people. They made money in the midst of the people. You can find God, dear brahmacharis and yogis and swamis. Live your ashrams. Move into the market. Yes, work with your people because our people are well disciplined, and in that discipline we find wealth of richness. Of Atma or Brahma, we call it any name. Andrew Carnegie said, "No man becomes rich unless he enriches others. To become rich, be in the midst of the people."